What is the nature of evil? What is the meaning of corruption? What does it mean for something to be so vile, so profane, that ancient edict declares that it must be rooted out and exterminated at all costs? A wickedness so great and so pervasive that you and your people simply cannot allow it to exist in the same universe as you. Like a terrible dragon of yore, an entity has entered into the abyss that seeks to destroy all who are holy and all that is good. An echo of the past so terrible that internal conflict is set aside for the sake of fighting this rediscovered evil. The return of the ancient enemy, Azdaja. Greetings fellow Empyreans, I am Ashtarothi, the voice of New Eden, returning once again to explore the universe of New Eden, and specifically the Triglavian Collective. In my first video on the topic, we introduced the Triglavians through the messages of their spokesman Zoria Triglav, and I strongly recommend you go back and watch that first if you haven't, or if you just feel you need a review. In addition to that, we will be covering things discussed in my Who Are the Drifters video, which I also recommend that you watch. Links in the cards and down in the doobly-doo below. Today I want to start decrypting the Triglavians' messages to each other and combine it with other descriptions and information to begin to tell the story of what happened with these people and how these events led to the invasion and subsequent events. Before we dig into this with Ernest though, a bit of technical housekeeping. Now as we mentioned last time, the Triglavians have records, known as data streams, documenting their encounters with the Road Drones, Drifters, Capsuleers, and Sanchez Nation. Each of these are recorded in a set of six data streams broken into two chunks of three. The first three from each set was released upon first contact with the Triglavians, and the second set were released several months later as part of the Secrets of Abyss event. In addition to this, the first three records always have a different style than the final three, and it more or less breaks down like this. Data streams one through three records early encounters with the Triglavians and the group in question. Data Stream 4 represents a turning point in the story, in which a decision about the group in question is brought to the table. And Data Streams 5 and 6 seem to record their ongoing communications on the topic, and are broken down into past, current, and future events. Now I know all of this may seem a bit abstract, and it is, but I wanted to introduce you to the overall structure before we begin to dig into any particular story. It is also worth noting that the Data Streams themselves almost never paint an entire picture, and other descriptions and information must be pulled in to fully understand what is happening. Of all four sets of standard data streams, the Triglavians' encounter with the Drifters and Sleeper forces seem to be the most straightforward and least controversial of the different stories told. So we will start there both to better understand the relationship between these ancient enemies, but also to help lay out the framework for future understanding of the more complicated stories. As a final note, while I have tried to keep the information presented as foundational as possible in the previous video, from here on out we are going to be wading deeper and deeper into the territories of speculation as well as discussing information that we simply do not know from an in-universe perspective. So please, try to keep this in mind as we explore the ancient enemy, Azaja. We begin with AEA-1, which reads, Clade ships of the three tactical Troika classification in communion militant with Varpulis subclade of Perun clade encountered the ancient enemy as Daja at reverse time coordinates while processing in sub-18 exclave of conduit loop construct 405. Absolute imperative of Poshloss extirpation against Azdaja was invoked without acceptable material realization. Tactical Troika of Varpulis subclade placed a casting of absorbed data into the clade flow for reflection of the complication of Triglav outside of the struggle. So what is a three tactical Troika classification clade ship? Well, the Triglavians do not refer to their ships in the same way that we do. In fact, the names that we give their ships are based on the inventing subclade of that ship. For example, the description of the Damovic reads, Damovic subclade of Perun clade, revised adaptation schema for clade ship of the three tactical Troika classification has been accepted for imprinting and advancing time generations after cladistic glorification over Sambova subclade. Tactical subrole dispersal is the gift of strategic Troika. So, 
The Damovic class frigate that we know is actually named the Cladeship of the Three Tactical Troika classification, and the name Damovic actually comes from the subclade that created this particular version of that schematic. This description seems to suggest that the Damovic's version of the ship was proven over the alternative design of the Samovda. Or perhaps the ships were so effective in defeating Samovda that it was accepted by the entire collective. Returning to the first AEA data streams, we see a story of a group of Damoviks, known to the Triglavians as three tactical Troika classification clade ships, that encounter the Sleeper and Drifter forces, and they immediately invoke their noema, or policy, of extirpation. Now, not to get too far into the weeds at the first sentence of the first data stream, but already we can see that the Triglavian Collective is far more complicated than we originally thought. Within each clade, there are multiple subclades, who likewise are also in conflict with one another. Additionally, it is also worth noting that this event did not seem to represent the end of the Samovda subclade. The release of the Drekovic came after the initial release of the Triglavians, and so likely suggests a later development than these original records. And yet, in the Drekovic description, we see Drekovic subclade of Perunclade relinquishes the adaptation schema of reverse time accepted 243 tactical Troika classification clade ship from the proving grounds of Perunclade on the ascent conjunction of prayer from Gromovi and Samovda subclades. Evocation of playful communion across repeated time by tactical Troika in sub 15, sub 21, and sub 27 exclaves of repeated conduit loop construct 303 is under now time pressure. So there's a lot in there, but from here we can see that the Samovda subclade, while having Damovic subclades gain cladistic glorification over them in the past, still seems to exist and, along with Gromovi, is able to petition the wider Perun clade. Gromovi also shows up several times in the data streams and seems to be strongly associated with the multi-body tracking pylon, but we will have to catch up with them in a future video. For now, what we can learn from this is that the Triglavians have a very complex society with multiple clades and subclades that challenge and fight each other. And while the Triglavians have their own naming scheme for their ships, namely numbered clade ships, our names for them come from the subclades that designed or at least is strongly associated with that particular design. So going back to the AEA, we can see that a set of Damoviks encountered the ancient enemy as Daja while patrolling Conduit Loop Construct 405 in the Sub-18 Exclave. Now, we have a lot of records that report time and locations much like this. However, unfortunately, it doesn't give us much to work with. Firstly, every time code coordinate given within any Triglavian record is listed as indecipherable. It is not really known if this is some sort of censorship by Concord or the Triglavians, but I have a different theory. The Jovians, Sleepers, and Drifters all process things in what is known as trinary data, unlike the binary systems that we use today. In a binary system, all data is preserved as a set of ones and zeros that often represent, or are represented by, the binary states of on or off, high or low. Trinary data, by contrast, would mean data encoded with three potential states. This could, in theory, allow them to process far more complex data, but it would also render that data, or information, absolutely unintelligible to anyone trying to process it from a binary perspective. The oldest official record I could find exploring trinary data comes all the way back from 2008 in a dev blog by CCP Svarthal, entitled The Great Collector which discusses the Empyrean known as Entity and his extensive collection of over 7,000 items, including, quote, trinary data stream found on the wreckage of the Jove battleship floating in the Stain region, end quote. And in the description of the object, it reads, quote, this complicated stream of data seems to be in trinary language. It appears to be of Jovian origin, end quote. However, a forum post from 2004 seems to suggest that the trinary data stream came from all the way back then and was in fact recovered from Venial's wreckage. This is important because Venial is the Jovian who more or less is in charge of the Society of Conscious Thought, one of the main characters in the Inheritance Chronicle, and thus is one of the best sources of knowledge of the Precursor Crisis and the Talican. A bit of an aside on the Inheritance Chronicle. In YC-117, 2015, the relative stability of New Eden was broken by a space hauler named Caroline Grace when she observed a star in the Jove region becoming larger day after day. This event, eventually known as the Caroline Star Event, was the earliest warning of what was to come. 
Shortly after, the Jovian observatories began decloaking, and the Circadian Seekers, and later Drifters, began emerging into New Eden. For nearly a year, confusion and speculation reigned, leading the Hydrostatic Podcast to bring together the greatest thinkers in New Eden's history to discuss these matters in an attempt to shine light on current events. And from there we got the awesome Emergent Threads trailer, link in the doobly-doo. However, while the mystery may have started with a star in the sky, it was a different Christmas miracle which led us to answers. On December 23rd, 2015, The Inheritance Chronicle was released, telling the events subsequent to Matashi Reich's death after scanning Jamil Sorum, then Empress of Amar, shortly before her assassination by the Drifters. As you can see, this is another huge rabbit hole, which we have to come back to later. But for now, let's just leave it at The Inheritance Chronicle being one of the most important stories to understand the Precursor Crisis and modern events and move along. You can find links to The Chronicle below, as well as a link to the Eve Reader podcast, who, along with several guests, have made a 40-minute long reenactment of the Chronicle. It's amazing. Check it out. Wow. Uh, where were we? Uh, oh, oh boy. Uh, th this is going to be a. This is going to be like a 30-minute long video, isn't it? Probably more. Well, okay. Let's just jump back into it. Just to remind ourselves, we are working our way through the first record of the Triglavians' conflict with the Drifters in the modern era. So a group of Damoviks encountered the ancient enemy as Daja, and as we can see in the next line, fail to destroy the enemy. Absolute imperative of Pashlas extirpation against as Daja was invoked without acceptable material realization. We also see a few more words that we should probably define to better understand things moving forward. As I mentioned in the Zoria video, the Triglavians like to use Slavic mythology and terminology to name and discuss things. In this case, we see the word Pashlast and as Daja, both terms that you may or may not be familiar with. The Azdaja in Slavic myth is an ancient evil dragon, a great evil that rises when a century-old serpent is eaten by another. This monster comes from an even earlier Iranian mythos, in which great heroes are sent out on heroic quests to slay the great monster. This echoes to us in the modern day through stories such as St. George and the Dragon. So, knowing this, we can tell that the Triglavians reserve a special place of hatred for their ancient enemy. It is also worth noting that during this initial encounter, they did not yet know about the true nature of the Drifters, the Sleepers, and the Other, and so their association with the ancient enemy does not appear to be connected to an understanding of the Drifters as the Other, but rather comes from their own misidentification of the Vigilant Tyrannos as being from the Second Jovian Empire, their real ancient enemy. From this, we can begin to ask ourselves, what happened between the Triglavians and the Second Jovian Empire? A question we will return to soon. The other word is poshlost. Considered a word lacking direct translation, its rough meaning is a word akin to taboo, vile, and corrupt. At least the Triglavians lack subtlety. Additionally, this report suggests that the Triglavians failed to destroy their enemy, reporting that the noema, or policy of extirpation or destruction, of the ancient enemy did not achieve, quote, material realization, end quote. In other words, they failed to destroy the enemy. Finally, we can see that the results of this encounter are submitted to, or cast into, the clade flow, which seems to be a collective bank of information, as well as interclade communication network. The only thing left here before moving on is to point out that the tactical troika is the one who places the casting into the clade flow, which implies that they survived the encounter. In a different data stream, the Triglavians encounter capsuleers, and the Triglavian ships are destroyed. In this case, it is the transfer conduit itself that records the information and submits it. Not sure if this is exactly essential to understanding the story, but I find it kind of interesting. Moving on. We finally make our way to the AEA-2 record, which continues the Triglavian's search for an answer for this returning threat. From AEA-2, Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle has affirmed the need for playful communion of repeated time by clades assembled and subclades militant and technical. The entosis of the ancient enemy as Daja into loop constructs must be sever reversed by the volition of merge consent of convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. The adaptation schema of clade ships for all tactical Traika classifications may be entered into the clade flow without proving. Playful communion seems to simply mean cooperation, and it would seem that the convocation is calling for all of the military and technical Traikas to work together on this problem. The word entosis may jump out to many Empyreans thanks to the drifter technology known as the entosis device. But what they seem to mean here is simply the original definition of the word, that of forced entrance. So what it appears to be saying is that the convocation is affirming the need for the majority of the Triglavians to work together and end the intrusion of the Drifter forces. 
The final line is confirmation that the specification for all of the ship's designs are allowed to be entered into the clade flow without proving. The key phrase here is without proving. While many of the ships used by the Triglavians go through a proving process, only the Lishak and Zunitra are entered without proving. The Zunitra came later as part of the invasion efforts, but the description of the Lishak itself tells us what happens next. Lashak subclade of Velis clade scattered the adaptation schema of reverse time reclaimed adaptation schema of 729 tactical Troika classification vessel into the clade flow without proving after convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Convocation of the commune Troika have now time pressure for dispersal to strategic Troika. Each ship type is given a Troika classification, and the 729 is the ship that we know as the Lashak. And just like the Damovic, it was named after the subclade that produced it. What is most interesting here is that the Lashak was created from a reclaimed adaptation schema, meaning that it is an older model that was taken out of service, but then brought back to be pushed to the strategic Troika. This offers us another interesting tidbit of information, that the Triglavian ships seem to be getting smaller over time. The ancient ships include such lumbering beasts as the Lashak, whereas the much more modern Damovic seems to be what was in use at the time of the Drifter's invasion into Triglavian space. If you think about it, this makes a lot of sense. The Triglavians are a decaying empire, living in a realm with little resources and no forgiveness. Over time, they have developed smaller and more nimble craft that use far less resources to build and operate. Could it be that they are whittling down their people as well, via proving, and only those who are glorified are allowed to keep their physical form? Who knows? Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, that's the tinfoil alarm. I, I guess we better move on. Uh, where was I again? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. They have just rediscovered the design of the Lashak battleship and submitted it into the clade flow. Next we read AEA-3. Report of the Paramount Strategic Troika of the Lashak subclade of Velis clade has reaffirmed the dispersal of reverse time reclaimed adaptation schema of 729 tactical Troika classification vessel into the clade flow after proving an anti-cladistic mortification with the ancient enemy as Daja. Repeated time casting and winnowing of invocations of imperative of Poshloss extirpation against Azdaja reveals an acceptable material realization. After everything we have learned in the first two records, this one is pretty easy to understand by comparison. Unlike the Damoviks, the Lashak subclade's battleships were capable of destroying the forces of vigilant Tyrannos. The only thing worth noting here is that this is the only time that the Triglavians refer to anti-cladistic mortification. Again, as we discussed in the Zoria video, Cladistic and clade come from biology, meaning sub-branches along the same biological tree. The Triglavians see themselves, and even us capsuleers, as being cladistically related. However, they do not feel the same way about the remnants of the Second Jovian Empire. Very interesting indeed. The Triglavians finally have a weapon to fight the Drifters, but is that enough to stop them? As mentioned before, each set of six data streams are broken into three different types. The first three records represent an early encounter with the entities in question, while the final two show a more ongoing and disjointed record. The fourth data stream of each set is a kind of bridge between the other two phases. While each of the fourth data streams have differences due to the vast different kinds of encounters that they have with each group, they also share a lot of similarities. With that in mind, let's read the fourth data stream. Prayer of the detached executive Troika for sublimation of Posh Lost Flow has evoked procession from convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle that requires winnowing of all discourses operating as elements in relation to the ancient enemy as Daja through semiosis. Detached executive Troika is granted mandate in Subornost to invoke countervailing imperatives without reverse time proving. Convocation affirms imperative on detached executive Troika to maintain playful communion over repeated time with clades assembled and subclades militant and technical. Oh hey, look at that! Our first appearance of the Detached Executive Troika for Sublimation of Poshloss Flow! As we pointed out in a previous video, we actually know the more common name of this character, Zoria Triglav. Without going into too much detail about the other sets of data streams, each of the four data streams are a communication between Zoria and the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Most of the time, the message is a request or prayer between Zoria and the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Whoever is making the request, they are seeking procession, or moving forward with the decision about that faction. However, this procession requires a winnowing of the discourses. The word winnowing means separating, and commonly used to mean separating wheat from chaff. And the word semiosis means communication of meaning through signs. 
They use this word a lot, and you may recognize the word from the semiosis consoles that we use to intercept Triglavian messages. We will also see the word semiosis again in a few minutes. So it would seem to suggest that Zoria is asking for the Convocation to go over all of the data and communications in regard to the ancient enemy and move forward with a decision on the matter. And it would also appear that the Convocation does so, and thus grants a mandate to Zoria in response. We do see a couple more new words, so let's really quick. Subornost means to be in partnership with, and countervailing means to offset something by equal force. It would seem that Zoria has been given permission to engage and repel the drifters and sleepers without having to bother with verifying it ahead of time, i.e. without reverse time proving. However, the Convocation also verifies that this does not change Zoria's obligation to remain in friendly communication with the clades assembled and subclades militant and technical, which most likely means that Zoria simply must remain in communication and cooperation with the rest of the Triglavians as they conduct their countervailing operations. Now, before we wrap this bad boy up with the final two records, I think it could be valuable to put the story together. One day, a group from the Perun Clade piloting Damovix encountered forces from the Sleepers and Drifters, and recognizing them as their ancient enemy, they followed their protocols and attempted to destroy the intruders. However, while it seems that the Damovix most likely survived the encounter, they failed to destroy their enemy. From there, it was agreed that this threat was worth uniting the Clades to stop the intrusion, and a request for any solution to the problem was put out to the Clades. In response to this, the Lashak subclade of the Velis Clade recovered an older design that they believed could help them destroy the ingressing threat. After some testing, it was proven that the Lashak battleship, as we now call it, was in fact sufficient to destroy the ancient enemy's vessels. Once the solution was decided upon, the Convocation responded to Zoria's request for a decision on the matter of the ancient enemy. Zoria was instructed to begin conducting operations to disrupt and stop the invaders, with an understanding that they still must remain in close communication and coordination with the rest of the Triglavian Collective. So there we go, a fun story, easy peasy. But wait, you may ask, aren't there still two more data streams? Well yes, yes there are, but as I've alluded to a few times now, they are very different so I figured it would be invaluable for us to all understand the story so far before we move on. So with all that said... The fifth and sixth data streams of each set have far more in common with each other than with the previous sets. While the first four records appear to be some sort of historical record, often declaring within the report how the data was gained, as is the case with the AEA-1, the final two seem to be some ongoing communication or log. All but the ones for Sancha are by Zoria, and each of these begin with the title of the author and, quote, dialectical semiosis flow follows. So clearly this is some sort of log from Zoria, and the rest of it is broken into a set of past, present, and future records. I think that this can all be a bit confusing without an example, so let's just jump into AEA-5. Detach Executive Troika for the sublimation of Poshlos Flow, Dialectical Semiosis Flow follows. Ancient Enemy as Daja, present manifestation encountered as Vigilant Tyrannos. Reverse Time Discourse Element. Archive Pattern Analysis indicates successor entity of Jove Empire of the Chamber of Tyrants. Evocation of Poshlos Undoubted and Imperative for Extirpation Without Proving. Now Time Discourse Element. Recovered Materials Indicate Presence. Unshackled in Forbidden Dominance Arrangement. Counter to ideological patterns recovering pertaining to Jove Empire of the Chamber of Tyrants. Query encode. Jovian Expansionist Polity, Iteration 2. Dot, question mark, dot, question mark. Recode process. Indicating anomaly in ideological development. Pass through Advancing Time New Discourse Element Configuration. Advancing Time Discourse Element. Reinforced request for countervailing measures to be undertaken. Continue it with surveillance and proceed to next stage within predicted time horizon for effective action. Submit to Cladeflow. Now before we go on much further, we should point out that not only were these records released at a different time, but pieces of these records were also released through another matter entirely. This is where the semiosis consoles came in. See, the fifth and sixth records were released as they were moving towards Invasion Chapter 1. They had added a brand new room in the hardest areas of the Abyss a room that we have come to know as the Shipyard. When you enter into any Tier 5 Abyss, you now have a chance to end up in the Shipyard, rather than the normal 3 conduit loop that you would expect to encounter. If you go in today, you would find them building Zenitra Dreadnoughts to use in the observatories. 
but originally you encountered a world arc under construction. This was dramatized in the Invasion Chapter 1 trailer. Now, unlike any other room in the Abyss, if you're too scared to take on the shipyard room, you can just run. The gate itself is unlocked, and you're given good cause to take it, as a swarm of Lashaks begin locking your ship. However, if you brave the encounter, and you smash their biocache and steal the loot inside, unlike the normal rooms, this one contains a box with data streams and a highly coveted Semiosis console. Since their discovery, owners of the console has occasionally intercepted messages from the Triglavians, and part of the fifth and sixth data streams were encoded inside of the messages sent, as well as the data streams dropped. This also allows us to see more of what the messages look like in its more natural state. None of this is likely essential to understanding things, but I think it's pretty neat. Once the actual record begins, we see it first identify the ancient enemy as Daja, as having the present manifestation of Vigilant Tyrannos. This is of course the name of the Drifter faction, as well as any sleeper subordinates to them, such as in the Abyss or Poshvin. Now, the Triglavians refer to time a lot, as in repeating time, advancing time, etc. It would appear as if this is an almost unnecessary flourish, because you can often just drop the word time and understand roughly what they're saying. Thus, reverse time is in the past, now time is, well, now, and advancing time is in the future. They also refer to repeating time for things that will occur over and over. So with that understanding, we see that their original assessment was that these entities are successors to the Second Jovian Empire. This informs what I said earlier about the Triglavians not understanding the true nature of the Drifters, but rather identifying the Second Jovian Empire itself as the ancient enemy. Additionally, it confirms that because of this, they were deemed posh lost undoubted, and it is an imperative upon them to destroy them outright. However, it is in now time that things get a bit more complicated. It would seem that they have been recovering pieces from the wreckage of encounters with Vigilant Tyrannos, and from that they have determined that they are unshackled in Forbidden Dominance Arrangement. Now this line is most interesting, and one that is hotly contested. However, it is worth noting that the rogue drones that are hostile to the Triglavians in Poshvin are part of the Unshackled Overmind. And in a character post on May 14th, 2020, a spokesman for the pro-Triglavian Kybernauts reaffirmed the existence of a forbidden dominance arrangement. Whether this is to represent the enslavement of the sleepers by the other, or something else entirely, remains to be seen. However, they continue by pointing out that this is counter to what they would expect from the Second Jovian Empire, because they're not. They run a query and encoding against this Jovian Expansionist Polity Iteration 2. Question mark, dot, question mark. Now, a polity is like a society, so this suggests that they were testing what they were seeing versus recovered records of the Jovians from Iteration 2, which is likely the Second Jovian Empire. Testing their current findings against the historical records indicate that there has been some sort of disruption in the ideological development of the Second Jovian Empire. Now, we know that the end of the Second Jovian Empire came from the Shrouded Days, as their great empire was brought low by the emergence of the Jovian disease. Given that their records are recovered, and they don't seem to know what happened to the Second Jovian Empire, this puts the escape or imprisonment of the Triglavians around this same time period. Some have even go so far as to suggest that the Triglavians, with their bioadaptive suits and their mutaplasmids, may in fact be the modifiers from the Second Jovian Empire an ideological opponent to the statics, including those who would eventually become the sleepers. Whether this is true, and whether the Triglavians are the creators or victims of the Trovian disease, remain to be determined. What does seem to be true is that this discovery changed how the Triglavians were going to be dealing with, or at least discussing the enemy moving forward. Which brings us to advancing time. The need for countervailing measures is still a top priority for Zoria. However, there is an immediate need for continued surveillance to gather information, as the time for effective action may be running out. Alright, so as I said, the last two are way different than the ones before, and as you can see, this leads to a lot more speculation. So let's just wrap this up with AEA-6. Detach Executive Troika for sublimation of Posh Loss Flow, Dialectical Semiosis Flow follows. Ancient Enemy is Daja. Exploratory operations have failed to establish active locus for presence of Jove Empire of the Chamber of Tyrants. Reverse time discourse element. 
stability of local spatial temporal environments deviate from archive reference data pertaining to query encode Jovian expansionist polity iteration to dot question mark dot question mark recode process to cast a sounding in the flow of virage now time discourse element Archive spatial temporal coordinates ranges log encode Jovian expansionist polity iterations 2.0.0 to 2.7.20 recode process not reconciled with ingressing data after evocation of ancient time noemata of kosorg conduit flow and confluence advancing time discourse element procedures for continued exploration and surveillance under contemplation processing to imperative without proving in the gift of the detached executive troika for the sublimation of posh loss flow this time, the historical report flat out says that they have failed to determine the center of power for the Second Jovian Empire. To make matters even more complicated, the Triglavians also performed tests against the locations in which the ancient enemy was arriving from, and mapped it to the known locations of the Second Jovian Empire, and found no matches. The enemy is clearly not coming from where they expected, and they don't seem to be who they thought they were. The conclusion suggests that Zoria is going to continue to investigate these matters. As far as what a Kostorg conduit flow and confluence means, well, if you have a theory, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. <laughs> so there you have it, six data streams about the ancient enemy, and it seems that the Triglavians are left as confused as we are. Now from Templar 1, we know that the Drifters are in fact likely manifestations of a rogue artificial intelligence that has escaped the Sleeper's construct, but neither we nor the Triglavians know this in universe. Perhaps the growing conflict with the Drifters and the Triglavians will finally reveal the true nature of the most terrifying enemy of all life in New Eden, the Other. But for now, we will just have to wait and watch our Semiosis consoles. But until then, I have been Ashtarothi, and glorification to those who extirpate the Posh Lost. Thanks for watching. I hope that through this, I have helped show not only how to understand the Triglavian speech, but how much information really is out there for you if you're willing to look. I know a lot of people would rather a chronicle or a fiction portal entry that tells the canonical answer about the Triglavians, but I personally love this kind of environmental storytelling. There is a lot to learn and understand about the Triglavians, their motivations, and their technologies, but the important thing to know is that this is way, way deeper and more involved than most give it credit for. This was a long one, so thanks to all of you who stuck it out all the way to the end. And if you're already here, you might as well leave a comment telling me what you thought about the video, what I could improve on, or what questions you would like me to look at in a future video. Additionally, if you can like and share my videos, I'd really appreciate it. It seems that YouTube isn't quite keen on my content yet, so we have to appease those algorithm gods. As always, relevant links are in the doobly-doo down below, including a link to my Patreon, where for only a dollar a month, you can get your name on my list of supporters that make these videos possible for everyone. But even if you don't want to do that, just enjoying and sharing my videos is more than enough. There's plenty more to discover as well, so I hope that you will all join me on that journey. And until next time, I'll see you in space.